We have our function uh, g of x, which is equal to a multiplied by 1 divided by 3 to the power x plus 7. And then we are told that it passes through some point e, which is made out of uh, coordinates minus 2 and 10. And then the first question, 4.1, says um, calculate the value of a. This will be relatively easy because we only have one information, if I can say so, which is the coordinate. So we have to use that coordinate to calculate the value of a. So we're going to say um, y equals to a multiplied by 1 divided by 3 to the x plus 7. And then we substitute e, right? So we're going to say sub e. So we're going to have um, 10 equals to a to the power a, a multiplied by 1 divided by 3, not to the power. And then we can have to the power minus 2, uh, which is the value of x, right? Uh, plus 7. So if we solve for a, we're going to get a equals to 10 minus 7, right? So I took 7 to the left hand side. And then I can divide by uh, 1 divided by 3 to the minus 2. And then if you put this in your calculator, you're going to get a equals to 1 divided by 3. So now we know that g of x is equals to 1 divided by 3 multiplied by 1 divided by 3 to the x plus 7. And then we can move to 4.2. 4.2 says calculate the y, calculate the coordinates of the y intercepts of g. As soon as I hear y intercept, I'm thinking x equals to zero. If it, it had said x intercept, I was gonna be thinking y equals to zero. So we're gonna have um, y equals to one divided by three multiplied by one divided by three to the power zero because x is 0 at the y-intercept plus 7, uh, which is equal to 1 divided by 3 multiplied by 1, because every number to the power 0 is 1, uh, plus 7, right? So, okay, if you put this in your calculator, you can just get uh, 22 uh, divided by 3. I was tempted to just <laughs> do it in my head. But anyway, let's carry on. 4.3. 4.3.1 so we are given h of x which is equals to 1 divided by 3 uh, to the power x and then now uh, 4.3.1 says uh, describe the translation <coughs> from g to h all right so let's look at h of x and then compare it to g of x so g of x is uh, 1 divided by 3 multiplied by 1 divided by 3 to the x uh, plus 7, right? So in order to tell what transformation is going on, you have to write uh, one function uh, as close as possible as the other. Uh, for h of x, is really blank, right? There isn't much we can do. But then for g of x, we can say uh, instead of having 2, uh, 1 divided by 3s, we can see uh, 1 divided by 3 to the power x plus 1, right? And then we'll have that plus 7 there because if you multiply in uh, numbers of the same base, you can add the exponents. So now uh, we have it as close to h of x as possible, right? And we can describe uh, the translation. This will tell us that h of x equals to f of x minus 1 minus 7, right? Uh, this minus 7 here, it tells us that g of x was moved 7 units down, right? 7 units down in attempt to get h of x. And then here because we have x minus 1, we know that if uh, we have uh, x plus uh, let's say we just let's say we have x plus q right if q is a positive number then you move the graph to the left and then if q is a negative number uh, you move the graph to uh, the right so because here we have x minus one that will mean that uh, this graph was moved one unit 
to the right and that's how you describe that translation and now 4.3.2 uh, determine the equation of the inverse of h in the form y equals to so as soon as i hear inverse uh, i'm thinking uh, swap x and y and then solve for y so if we do that i'm gonna get y equals to uh, 1 divided by 3 to the to the x and then if I swap x and y I'm gonna get x equals to 1 divided by 3 to the y take logs on both sides I'm gonna get log of x is equals to y log of um, 1 divided by 3 if you could if you take log you can bring down the y so I'm gonna get y equals to log of x divided by log of 1 divided by 3 uh, which is gonna give me log of x base 1 divided by 3